So after we set up these different screens and we did a publish, I saw my, my drawing on my device. I'm going to click OK to close it. And it goes back to the project here. So what we'll do is, just to get a little bit of practice here, I'm going to delete what I drew right there. That was just temporary. What I want to do instead is to uh, show us that the whole point of setting up this mobile project is that now we're going to be able to do interactivity. So one thing that we can do pretty quickly is write the code to be able to do a little drag and drop. We're going to draw something and then we're going to move it around with our finger on the device. So uh, I'm going to get the, the brush tool again and this time I'm going to I'm going to draw something again. I'm going to draw a box. I'm going to draw a cube. Draw whatever. I'm drawing an object. This is a box that holds something. draw something. So when we actually program, when we actually do the programming to make the game work and all of that, we often have to deal with symbols, symbols so that the code can affect it. We've dealt with one symbol before. We've made a uh, a graphic symbol, but we have another kind of symbol to work with, a movie clip symbol. That's the one we usually want to use when we're creating interactivity. So I drew a box. Select your box completely. So I'll go back to the select tool and select your box. And then press F8. <coughs> F8 on the keyboard pops up to create a symbol. Previously, we've used graphic symbol. We're going to use movie clip symbol most of the time from now on. The big difference is that we can write action script code to affect uh, movie clip symbols, but not graphic symbols. So make sure that's movie clip symbol. And then for the name of it, we'll call this MC Box. MC is for movie clip. We're going to create a symbol. It's going to go into our library. It's going to have a name, MC Box. Its type is Movie Clip. So later on, if you played the game, you see that there's a home screen with a Start button and a Help button. Those are Movie Clips. I click on the Start button. Something happens to take me to Scene 2, where I see the gate. The gate is a Movie Clip. I'm able to click the gate code happens that the gate opens up and I walk in to go to the front door. Then if you're at the front door, there's a rock on the floor. The rock is a movie clip. MC Rock. I use the code to then be able to pick up the rock and throw it at the window. That's hit, that's hit detection. So all of this code that we're going to learn basically is code that is going to apply to movie clips. So click OK. <coughs> I have a symbol here. Look at your library. On the right, you've got your library tab, and you've got the movie clip symbol. I also kind of want to color it in, because what I've drawn here, if I try to pick this up and move it, right now the only thing that really exists are the edges of what I've drawn. If I'm trying to move this and I click right here, that's empty. I want to actually fill in the colors so that I can click anywhere to move it. Right now I have to click on a line to move it. These lines are small. So I want to double click it in the library. Double click your symbol in the library. And just fill in some colors. So I'm going to do some colors here. because it wasn't really filled. It looks white, but it's empty. Mm -hmm. 
So whatever you drew, just fill in the colors so that it's a closed shape. And then click back to go to scene one at the top. All right, so I've drawn something. I've made it into a symbol, specifically a movie clip. If you look on your properties panel, I've got it selected. There are various properties here. The most important property, now that we're going to deal with code, is the instance name. Do you see at the top here, instance name? It's empty. We have not added an instance name. In order for the code to understand, I'm going to click on something and something will happen. We need to name the something. This box needs a name. So under instance name, I'll call it box underscore MC. These names don't really matter, but we're going to get used to that when we've got our, our movie clip in the library, in the library it's going to be called MC button, MC rock, MC hammer if you want, MC whatever. In the library, it's going to be MC something. But the instance name on the front here will be backwards, box underscore MC. So if I had a button, it would be button underscore MC. So does that make sense? In the library, it's MC box, and in the properties, it's box MC, box underscore MC. Now that it has an instance name, we can apply code to it. On the keyboard, press F9 to bring up your code panel. F9 brings up Actions. It's also found under Window Menu, Actions, or F9. Last time when we uh, did a little bit of coding, I had said, we're going to write code, and it's going to get attached to a frame. Well, I've got layer one for my box. We need a new layer for my code. So your layer one, let's call it box, and lock it. Make a new layer, call it actions, capital A. own layer and everything else on its own layer. So make sure you're on your frame one actions layer and then in the actions panel we're going to write a comment so this is slash slash and say my first version of my game and then enter. Important things that we want to do is the is have the ability to uh, to move things on the screen and to be able to click on different spots of the screen. So let's say we want to move this this object, this box. Uh, actually, let's unlock the layer and then click on it to select it. A, a tablet, I have one more just in case your thing didn't work. I have one more tablet, not a cable, however, just a tablet. No, oh, so you guys have to start bringing your USB cables for your phones, okay? Yeah, <laughs> if you don't have one, they're really, really cheap, okay? <laughs> however, it looks like some of the cheapest cables don't quite work. Oh. Some just charge. Yeah. Mine some, mine just charges, so. some just charge. You, you won't know until you plug it in sometimes. Uh, so, okay. <coughs> We've got an actions layer. We've got a box layer. Uh, I unlock the box layer and I select my box. In the 
questions panel. Uh, here's the part where we're going to write lots of code. But the good news is there are there are code snippets. There are little pieces of pre-made code that we can use. I don't want to write the code over and over and make a mistake. So there are code snippets where I can easily get started. So you should see on the top row over here, it says actions, there's a little pin, etc., etc., and then there's a little double uh, angle bracket there. Code snippets. These are collections of pre-made code to do a bunch of quick, fun things. So click on that. You get a code snippets panel. And we're going to deal with the action script code. In this folder, we have all of these quick things to do. We have uh, code to uh, work with audio, to play music, to pause music. We have code related to animation, navigation of the timeline, jumping to different scenes and such. Uh, and then we've got uh, code snippets related to touch devices. So inside of the mobile touch events folder, you have touch and drag event. That's what we want. We want to touch that box to be able to drag it. <coughs> if you double click touch and drag event, sometimes it happens right away, sometimes it tells you the action requires an object to be selected. Okay, so I'm going to select the box then I'm going to double click touch and drag. <coughs> Some of these you don't have to have anything selected. Some of them they work right away. Well, this is telling you, so don't get confused here. Let's say you need to select this first to be able to then use that. So I'm going to select the box and then I'm going to double click touch and drag. And for me, it wrote 20, 22 lines of code for me. So in the actions panel, it has. Why do you have to tap by accident? What's that? We have to put the tap code by mistake. So this wrote a lot of code for us. It wrote several lines of code. Uh, we don't have to fully fully understand what it does just yet, but if you if you look at it, you know it says here. It, it wrote a it wrote a little note for us. Touch and drag event allows the object to be moved by holding and dragging the object. It has some line of code here that I don't understand yet, but it's something about multi touch. And there's a few things over here. There's my box, box MC. It says add event listener. And then it says touch begin. So when we see this code, we see that we have to be very specific. This is, again, the, the computer doesn't know what we want. Obviously, I want to move the box. But we have to write all of this code in order for that to happen. This is saying, what happens at the moment that you touch, you start to touch it, touch begin? And what happens at the moment that you <coughs> stop touching it? Touch begin and a touch end. When we start to touch it, something else happens. We use what is known as a function. A function, touch begin handler. When we stop touching it, the function touch end handler happens. A function is a collection of steps. So I'm going to back up to the top over here and write some notes. Functions are collections of steps. I want to do something over and over. Uh, you know, when I'm making my game and, I'm, and, I'm, and the ship is shooting lasers and, and shooting at the creatures, those are actions that happen. The laser shoots out, the laser hits the character, you get points. Those are steps that happen over and over. So that's often a function, a collection of steps, a collection of code. Functions are, functions are collections of steps, of code. This did it for us right here. 
a function, fl, flash function, was created. And if you see on line 15 or so, here it is. Function, fl, touch begin. A bunch of other stuff that we'll learn about later. Event.target.startTouchDrag. Event handlers allow something to happen. This is an event handler. Add event listener. Here's our box on the screen. And we've got an event listener. We've got code that is waiting for something to happen. We're waiting for an event to happen. We're waiting for the event of touch begin. So when I touch the box, that's a touch begin action or event. It's then going to wait and listen for touch end. So when I stop touching the box, that's another event handler. It's, it's handling an event, the event of touch begin, the event of touch end. Let's remember to mute our devices, please. Function FL touch begin handler. And here, events.target.start touch drag. All of this then is what actually does the movement uh, of, of, of doing it. The current target, the current thing that we've clicked on. Let's start to drag it with a bunch of other options. Don't worry about that yet. When I let go, when I stop touching it, then this function happens right here. Target stop touch drag. So I said previously there's like 200, 200 action script codes to learn. You don't need to learn them all. You need to learn the ones that make sense at this point of what you want it to do. And then when we've got snippets, you know, if you use the right snippet, you're done. You're sure back in the day they didn't have this kind of. No. no. They had to go look. You had to go look at a book that was five inches thick and then find the right page and write the right code. So this is all we need for the moment. I want to see the result. I want to go up to File, Publish. The first time, we need to go to Android Settings to set up our certificate and all of that, and we have the Publish button. Now that we've set it up once, we should be able to simply go to File, Publish. So publish it. It should load up the project again on your device you should have that brand new little square that you drew and try to tap it and hold it to drag it <coughs> so the more complex we make our project the longer it will take to publish unfortunately just wait a moment to publish So uh, publish might take a while. We do have a way to kind of test it before it actually goes on to the device. Uh, if, if you're seeing that publishing takes a long time, we can still do the, the simple control enter. Control enter will, will, will also work, but it's way better to actually see it on a real device. So I'm going to see how long mine takes. It's taking too long for my tastes. But if it, if it takes a while, I can still do control enter. It's not as good as actually doing the, the device, but at least I'll get a result. It works. Great. So there you are moving your red box. What's that? Yeah, that warning, we can ignore it. It's probably going to pop up all the time. Just ignore it. If, you, if, if it showed up on your device, it worked. But if you get that warning, don't worry about it. <coughs> so... Uh, how many of you did it work? How many did you see your, your project? Good. Are you able to tap it and hold it and drag it? Does that work too? Yep. Good. 
Brown's cookie clicker kind of game was really popular. <coughs> So mine's taking a moment. Mine's taking a moment, but hopefully it'll come up. And if yours worked, then it worked. I'm going to cancel mine. I'm going to assume it worked. Um, yes. All right, everyone. So uh, that was a that was a code snippet. 
uh, we have other ones here that we could experiment with. We saw under mobile gesture, or where is it, mobile touch, we had that code snippet. It wrote 22 lines for us. Uh, we will write more code ourselves, but a lot of what's here is a good starting point to have us do something. Let's say we'll do one more thing, then we'll, then we'll wrap up. Let's say in this screen here, there is this box. I want to move to another screen, another scene, for example. So what we'll do is uh, you'll see uh, all that we've done right now is in uh, scene one. It says up here, scene one. Let's create a scene two. So go up to your window menu and select your scenes panel. Window menu scene. We've got a scene one. Let's create a new scene. So we've got scene one, scene two. On scene two, I want to just draw something else. Just put something on the screen to, to show you we're in scene two. So in scene two, I have something. So I'm gonna, I want to go from scene one to scene two, screen one to screen two. So we'll go back to scene one. I have a layer uh, for box. Let's make a new layer for button. I'm going to draw a very simple button. So a new layer. This is in scene, back in scene one. I'll call it button. And I'll draw a super simple arrow. In order for any of this to work, what we did a little while ago was we needed to turn this into a symbol. So we drew an arrow. I'm going to select the arrow and press F8 to turn it into a symbol. What would be a good name for this symbol? MC next, sure. MC button, MC next, MC go, whatever. It's a movie clip. I'm turning it from a plain old drawing into a symbol, a movie clip symbol, in order for us to write code. So convert that to a symbol, click OK. Once I've got that on the screen, it needs an instance name. So remember that we have a, an object that we've drawn. It needs an instance name. Then we can attach the code to it. Okay, convert it to a symbol demo. What's that? Convert it to a symbol demo. Yes. Yep, then. then on the top right corner, we're going to go to instance name, and we'll call this instance name next underscore MC. So in the library, it's MC next. Instance name is next MC. What I want here, the code snippet that I want this time, is timeline navigation. So I have the, the arrow, the button on the screen. It has an instance name. If I don't give it an instance name, it will choose one for me, and it'll be really lame. So I should choose my own name so that I know what it is. Instead, it'll give me some random name. So I've selected the arrow, and now we're going to be in the the folder of timeline navigation. <coughs> That's what I want to do now. I want to move to a different point in the timeline. So if you open the timeline navigation folder, we have all of these possibilities. Click and go to stop at this frame, <coughs> next scene. Exactly. We've got go to the next scene <coughs> right there. Notice if you hover your mouse over these, it also tells you. Clicking the object moves the playhead where it disappears. 
it tells you it goes to the next spot. So we want click to go to next scene and play. If you double click that, it should have written the code for you in the actions panel. Right there, we've got another event handler. We've got the code, the name of your symbol, next MC. Add event listener. <laughs> so wait for something to happen. Well, the thing that we're waiting to happen is a mouse click or a tap on the, on the screen. Once we've got a click or a tap, run a function, click to go to next scene. <coughs> function right here, click to go to next scene. And what happens is, in our current movie clip, in this current movie clip, go to the next scene. So that's the actual command, next scene. But we need to trigger that command by tapping first. And that's what's happening here. <coughs> there's a button, there's an event handler, there's what happens, it triggers it, next scene. Now, I'm going to undo that. Next scene does that exactly. It goes to scene two. We only have two scenes. But what if I want to go from my home scene to scene seven? That's not going to work. <coughs> I want to be able to tell it, go to scene 7. So I'm going to undo that. Press Control z If it doesn't undo it, well, delete that part then. I guess undo won't undo it. Delete the, delete the code it gave us. This works only to go next or back. I want to be able to go anywhere I want. So we want to delete this code. I'm going to select my arrow again. And then I'm going to do the code snippet, go to scene. That's basically let us choose our scene. Clicking the object moves to a scene that we specify. <coughs> click on, double click on that one. The one uh, click to go to scene and play. Not the next scene, but go to scene. It's the last one in the timeline. <coughs> The code here now is a little bit different. It's still got the add event listener part. It still has the mouse click function, etc. It's still uh, affecting our current movie. But now we've got go to and play. Instead of simply go to next scene, now we have an option to be able to go to different frames and scenes. So notice it says uh, what frame, comma, what scene. We want to go to frame one. But not scene three, scene two. We only have scene one and scene two. So change that to say scene two. So now we've specified a particular scene. If you publish it, it, it should work, but it'll actually work kind of weird. Now I'm going to do the control uh, test. Yeah, it might be a little, you know, electrocutal polygon for us. So it's going to do that. Well, let me stop that. Uh, because what I've said here is go to and play scene one. Uh, I mean, scene two. So what happens is it goes to scene two. And we saw on, on Monday that when the timeline gets to the end, it goes back to the beginning. That's exactly what's happening here. We were on scene one, play my code on scene one. Then it went to scene two, play my code on scene two. And when that's done, it goes back to scene one and it plays over and over and over. So what we want to do on scene two is to stop the code. Go back to scene two, create yourself a a, uh, an actions layer on scene 2. <coughs> stop exactly, we will add a simple stop command. So, on your actions layer, we simply type the stop command. You might also notice 
is here. We've got code on scene one, we've got code on scene two. Actions layer frame one, actions layer frame one. So here's a quick way to be able to jump to our different scenes and frames where there is code. So from scene one, it's going to do its thing. And then that code is going to say, go to and play scene two. And then on scene two, we say, stop. Don't give me a seizure, please. So now if I save it and publish it, or control test. Oh, one more thing. We need a stop. We need a stop on, on, uh, on scene one. Because it played scene one, and then it went right away to scene two. I stopped there. I needed to stop also on scene one. We need to stop on scene one for that code to be in effect. And then we can go to scene two. So let me close that and go back. Back to scene one actions at the very beginning after our comments we'll add a stop as well on frame one that one's very easy to forget but we'll remember here so scene one we want to first stop everything pause our code right here then there's the button to go next or the button to drag and I click the button to go next then it'll go to scene two Stop. Scene two. Save that. I'm going to test it. If you're if you're testing it like me, it looks like it's going to be too slow on my device. So I'm testing it with a plain old Control Enter. But if you test it in this way, you get the you get the basic emulator. And then I have to activate touch gesture able to click. So if you're working on a real device, don't worry about this. But if you need to work on a virtual device like me, I need to activate the touch layer. And then now I can drag this thing, and now I can click Next. good for the moment. The big idea today was I wanted to make sure devices worked. Next time, I assume that the devices work. Next time, we're going to write much more code. But this right now was a quick test to make sure that the device worked and to be able to write a little code. And uh, then we'll write even more next time. So this code that I wrote, this project that I created, I'm going to put it in the network folder in case you want it. At the end of the day, I'm always going to put my code in there in case you want it. But this was super simple. If it didn't quite work, we'll do some lab time. If it did, great. Um, you know, we've got lab time. What I want to say also 